This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. If you want to pay less for a better VPN with more features, check out Dashlane by following the link in the description. Over the last few years, the impending arrival of 5G technology has caused quite a stir. This next generation of cellular wireless tech is expected to provide massively improved data transfer rates and greatly reduced latency. It's estimated that you'll be able to download a two-hour movie in just a few seconds on 5G, versus six minutes on 4G or 26 hours on 3G. Latency is expected to drop from about 45 milliseconds to just one millisecond, allowing for virtually lag-free connections, which could make things like remote surgery much safer and more precise. Of course, if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is, at least according to the most outspoken critics of 5G technology. Opponents of 5G claim that the higher frequency radiation from 5G towers and devices will cause cancer, or do irreparable harm to human DNA. Are these fears based in reality? Let's take a closer look. The main claim is that the microwave radiation emitted by 5G devices will cause cancer. This should sound familiar because it's exactly the same thing we were told about the microwave, the first mobile phones, Wi-Fi, smartphones carried in pockets, and a number of other technological advancements. Of course, just because these claims have been false before doesn't mean they're not accurate in this case. Let's look at how a few relevant groups classify the threat from these frequencies. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC, evaluates the potential carcinogenic agents and labels them with one of several stages of risk to humans. These stages are Group 1, definitely carcinogenic, Group 2A, probably carcinogenic, Group 2B, possibly carcinogenic, Group 3, not classifiable, and Group 4, probably not carcinogenic. Based on available evidence, IARC awarded radio frequencies from mobile devices a 2B rating. This made some people paranoid, because all they heard was cell phones and cancer. But a 2B rating isn't as bad as alarmists make it sound. Other 2B agents include aloe vera, pickled vegetables, and working as a dry cleaner. 2B just means there's a possibility, however unlikely, that at some point or under specific circumstances, the agent might have the potential to have carcinogenic effects on the body. This low threat rating is shared by the World Health Organization and IARC, as well as the FDA, CDC, National Cancer Institute, and independent groups such as the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. They're not saying there's no chance of cellular radio frequencies causing harm, but they are saying there's a lack of evidence for it, and more studies would be required to confirm any potential for risk. Okay, but that's just talking about low-frequency radiation. What about 5G devices, which will emit frequencies from anywhere between 1 to 70 GHz, compared to 3G or 4G at 1 to 2 GHz? Higher, more energetic frequencies are generally more dangerous, so that means 5G is dangerous, right? Not really. Sure, 70 GHz sounds like a lot compared to 1 or 2, but this kind of radiation doesn't become a real threat until 2.4 million GHz, at which point it's considered ionizing radiation, the kind that can cause serious damage to the human body. The fact of the matter is that radio frequencies from mobile devices, including 5G devices, are nowhere near powerful enough to cause the effects 5G alarmists are so worried about. Just staying out in the sun too long is vastly more dangerous and a much greater cancer risk than low-frequency radiation. If cell phones were really causing huge spikes in cancer formation, why aren't we seeing that reflected in cancer studies? The rate has stayed fairly consistent since the advent of cell phones, with no discernible peaks that would indicate a linkage to the proliferation of mobile devices. Should we conduct more studies? Absolutely. We should study a lot of things more than we do currently, but this is just another instance of people getting worked up over the newest technology and assuming the worst. You wanna see some proven risk factors? Look at the average American lifestyle. We worry about 5G while we drive our gasoline chugging SUV or diesel F250, while snacking on junk food and slurping down a 50 ounce double gulp from 7-Eleven. The average American is overweight, stressed, sedentary, and loves fried foods. A lot of us smoke or drink too much alcohol. All of these things are proven cancer triggers, and put together, it's the perfect storm. So maybe before we go on a crusade against cell phones without evidence, let's tackle some of our existing problems and invest in research and scientific programs that will allow us to study and better understand the risk factors of not only 5G or whatever other shiny new thing, but everything that's even remotely concerning. In the meantime, we should direct our efforts towards fighting things that we know are detrimental to societal and personal health. Regardless of how any of us feel about 5G, the technology is coming, and it will dramatically change the landscape of the internet and connected devices, and how we interact with them. The advent of zero-delay connections will provide huge utility not only for consumers and medical professionals, but also cybercriminals and authoritarian governments around the world. 
5G will likely inherit the security flaws of previous iterations, and the massively increased speed of data transfer will allow real-time facial recognition to be tied to personal cell phones, GPS, and other identifiers, as we've seen rolled out in China over the past year. So, while 5G may not be as dangerous to your health as some people claim, it will have a big effect on your personal online security. That's why I recommend using Dashlane, because it's the only tool you need to stay safe online. Worried about somebody monitoring your internet history? Worried about your data getting hacked? Use the same password for all your logins? Dashlane protects you against all of these problems. It does the job of a cutting-edge VPN and multiple security apps, and it's cheaper. Dashlane actively keeps you safe online in every way. All you have to do is download it and you won't have to worry about online security ever again. Concerned with how many times you've reused that one password? Dashlane will help you change them. Worried about the recent Facebook or Twitter hack? Dashlane will tell you if your data is compromised. Wondering if your info is being bought and used by hackers? Dashlane will scan and inform you. The basic version of Dashlane is completely free, but there's also a premium version that comes with all these features and is cheaper than other VPNs or security services. Dashlane provides you with a peace of mind you won't get anywhere else. As a special offer just for you guys, if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up using the link below and use the promo code Second Thought, you can get 10% off your premium subscription. It's what I use to protect my data, and I wouldn't recommend it unless I really believed in the product. So get serious about protecting your valuable data and get a free trial of Dashlane Premium for 30 days by going to dashlane.com secondthought and using the code secondthought.